Welcome back to the most passionate content for card collectors on YouTube and possibly the entire internet. I, once again, am your host, Jake Roy, 90s B-Ball Cards, and uh, we all have been seeing the meteoric rise of the basketball card market. You know, it seems like prices are skyrocketing, and there's new uh, records being set almost every day, it seems like. So, in this exciting time, I think this is a good time to take a look into some of the most valuable cards and uh, do a little deep dive into some of our collections. So uh, about a year ago, give or take, it was a little bit more than a year ago, I shared with you my top 10 most valuable cards in my collection. So with uh, the meteoric rise of, of, you know, skyrocketing, you know, prices are shooting to the moon. Space Jam, see what I did there? All right, enough with the corny jokes. So uh, with those prices shooting up very quickly, uh, I think it's a good opportunity, especially while a lot of us are on quarantine and stuck at home, to take a look at our collections and, and kind of reprice some of those things. You know, maybe a, a deal may come along and uh, it's apropos to know the value of your cards if you're trying to do a trade, or uh, maybe some of those cards are assets that you'd like to move into other assets or, or what have you. So I think it's a good opportunity to take a look at our collections and kind of re-baseline some of the value. So that's one of the things that I did. I looked at that top 10 list that I had shared uh, about a year ago and a few other cards in my collection to recompile that top 10 list. So without any further ado, let's get into the cards and into those top 10 most valuable cards in my collection today. So before we start, uh, I just wanted to let you know, we will actually be doing a little bit of extra credit today. <laughs> we will do 15 cards. Uh, so we'll do my top 10, and then there are a few cards that were in my top 10 last year that have fallen out. So I wanted to make sure to give you an update of where those were and where they sit today. So we're gonna have 15 cards all together. And uh, starting with this card here, we've got the 9798 Fleer Ultra, Ultra Abilities Superstar. This last year was number 10 on the list. This year, it's number 23 on my list. So it's uh, dropped on my list, and it's also dropped slightly in value. So last year, it was an $80 card. This year, it's about a $60 to $65 card. So you can see, you know, it's dipped a little bit. It did have a recent high sale of $95, but it's also had a low sale of $40. You know, condition can be an issue with these with the die cuts. Definitely the, the cut down on the bottom is something that can be troublesome. So when I got this uh, with a raw card review at the White Plains show in August of last year, it was something that I probably should have sent <laughs> on to get slapped. I think uh, BGS9 is a pop one. I think there are none higher than that in either BGS or PSA. So something I will get slapped in the future. And, uh, you know, so this one dropping a little bit in value, you know, it's dropped roughly 20 dollars uh you know roughly a 25 percent decrease so a little bit of a bummer but you know it, it's not that big of a deal to me i love this for the design and uh you know just goes to show you not everything is surging in price right now there are some that are doing the opposite so you know definitely good opportunities in some cases if you see something like this uh, that you really want to get in your collection this might be a good time if it's getting overlooked a little bit so the next one here, we have the 9596 Finest Mystery Finest Test Refractor. Last year, this was number eight on the list. This year, it's number 22 on the list. And uh, you know this one's been about flat. It's, it's had a slight decrease in value. So last year, it was about a $90 card. This year, it's about an $85 to $90 card. Uh, you know, and this one being a little bit off center or significantly off center, it's probably closer to the $80 to $85 range. Uh, you know, centering is definitely an issue on these. So, you know, the comps kind of range, the most recent one being $125. And I've seen a couple at that price, and I've seen a couple at the $50 price point. So, a pretty wide spread. And uh, I think that the centering and condition can definitely be an issue with those prices. So, if you have one that is well centered, whether it's of Penny or another player, I think it definitely is a good idea to get that graded especially bgs having those subgrades uh to let people know exactly what the centering is i think that the centering is kind of a key differentiator for the set so uh you know about a flat you know slightly decreased price on this one from last year next up uh this there's a second one with this but i'll just show the iverson so 
Uh, last year, we had the 99-2000 Hoops Build Your Own Card Iverson and Kobe. I still have the Kobe, but I figure I'll just keep it simple and just show the Iverson here. So those both were tied last year for number six, and this year they were selling at about the same price again, uh, but tied for number 16 on the list, so definitely... Uh, not as high on my list as they were last year, but uh, still up in value. So the Iverson last year was selling for about $100. This year it's selling for about $130 to $135. And, you know, the Iverson's not the easiest card in the set to find. This is a really cool set that I loved. Uh, something that I would love to actually see Panini bring back because I think this would be a pretty fun uh, technique for them to, to do redemption, something kind of fun. So if uh, anybody from Panini is watching this, please hit me up in the DM on Instagram or Twitter. I'd love to chat with you about my ideas here. But, uh, you know, this this set, you could uh, put send a booklet back in the mail. It was a redemption of sorts and pick your choice for front and back. So this was my first choice. And uh, if they had quantities left, they would send you that choice. If not, they would send you a different combination. So this one, if you look on the back, is number 243 out of 250. Every one is numbered to 250, but it doesn't mean that there's necessarily 250 of each one made. So this one was getting towards the end of the print run for this combination, so I was lucky to get my first choice here, uh, but very happy to do so. So this is a fun card. I love this set. It's a fun set to chase. This is actually, you might be looking at this saying, wait a second, why is it, why do you have scotch tape on it and why is there no penny sleeve? This is the same case that this was actually shipped to me in uh, back in 1999. So it's been in the same case and, you know, probably not the best thing for the condition of the card, but I, I like having it and it's, uh, it's a PC card that's not going to be leaving my collection. So I like having it in its original packaging. I still have the original packaging slip that I got it back from the Fleer Skybox company. And so all the original stuff, um, you know, this is a fun card for me in my collection. Love it. Next up, we have 9798 Ultra Star Powers Supreme. And uh, this card last year was number four on my list. This year, it's number 12 on the list. So last year, it was about a $120 card. It has definitely gone up a bit in value. So now it's about a $180 card. And uh, the most recent sale actually uh, surpassing $200, uh, closer to $230, $240. And, uh, you know, this card is just one of those designs that I absolutely love. I can't talk about enough. This is another one I got our uh, Rock Hard reviewed. Uh, 8.5, I was a little disappointed, but after seeing that Rock Hard review and I took a closer look, I can see why. You know, there's, you know, just some imperfections, but still might be something that I get slabbed in the future. Acetate cards usually do grade well, but when you start throwing foil and stuff on there, uh, there can be lots of issues that can go wrong uh, over the years. So uh, this card has gone up in price about 50%. So about 50% uh, of last year's price uh, added to this is uh, is about what you're looking at. So pretty cool there uh, to see that go up. It's a card that is just as rare as that star power, the the super, super star ultra abilities. Uh, but this one is definitely more valuable than that one, I think, because of that really cool design. is uh, I think that's part of the reason. So... Love seeing that. Next up, we have got the 9697 Flare Showcase Hot Shots of Penny Hardaway. And this card last year was number two on the list. This year it is at number 11. You know, so it's still pretty high up there. It definitely has ascended in value. Uh, so last year we were looking at $160 for this card. This year it's at about $200. And the last sale, surprisingly, was almost $250. So uh, that last sale really driving the price up on these pretty significantly. So uh, fun to see this go up. But, you know, again, it's been about 20 to 30% that this has gone up since last year. And this is one of those set designs that I loved as a kid. So when I was able to get this in my collection, I was very, very excited. Really cool card. Uh, you know, really fun set with the embossing. And obviously, I love those die cuts. So, um, you know just a card that I, I can't stop looking at. Just beautiful card, love that set. Number 11 this year. Next one we have was not on the list last year. So we've got 2009-2010 SP game used uh, combo materials of LeBron James and Michael Jordan. And this one's numbered to 499. So last year, uh, you know, surprisingly enough, this did not crack my top 10. This year, it is at the number 10 spot. You know, Jordan and LeBron card prices have been going absolutely bananas uh, out of everybody i think that those two players have been seeing the biggest percent increase in their prices so no surprise to see this crack my top 10. this is a card that i actually pulled uh, back when i was in college i just uh, randomly got a retail pack and uh, happened to pull this card so it's been in my collection ever since very exciting to see it ascend uh, i think it kind of flies a little bit under the radar there are some 
lower numbered parallels of this uh, and this is the only one that came in retail the other ones were hobby options and you know kind of a surprising set SP game used to have uh, in a retail format but uh, very fun for me to get into my collection and uh, I think at some point I'll probably get this graded you know having a LeBron and a Jordan card never hurts to to have it graded but some people like to feel the jersey that's that's one of the interesting thing with jersey cards keeping them raw some people like to actually have that tactile feel uh and, and kind of get a little bit closer to the, the player i guess and touch the, the piece of the jersey uh so interesting thing there but i will probably get this slabbed at some point in the future but this one uh so last year if i was putting this on the list this would have been about a 115 dollar card uh and this year it's about a 210 dollar card the most recent sale of this was actually $250, a little bit more if you include shipping. You know, so this card has gone up 70 to 80% in the last year, so a pretty significant rise uh, in value for this card. Really fun to see that happen. Uh, really happy to have this in my collection, not going anywhere anytime soon. All right, next one here, we've got 9798. Let's get that right side up. 9798. Fleer Metal Universe Titanium, and this is a Penny Hardaway card, even though Jordan is prominently featured on there. I did get this raw card reviewed. Raw card review gave it a nine, uh, and these cards do typically grade fairly well. So nines and tens are 8.5s maybe if you're looking at Beckett, uh, but mostly nines and tens are what you should be seeing for grades on these, unless they're significantly off center or there's some other uh, surprising defect. But acetate cards uh, typically grade pretty well, and these are pretty thin cards. Uh, so having it in a card saver is a pretty good way to secure it. You know, if you put this in a one touch, good chance it's going to slide out, which uh, is never good for cards. So, uh, you know, do be careful with your titaniums if you have one in your collection. Now, this one does uh, crack my top 10 this year. Last year was at number five. This year it's at number nine. Uh, and these do get a little bit of an uptick in price because Jordan is prominently featured on the card. And uh, some Jordan collectors like to uh, collect this card as well as some other Jordan cards where he's prominently featured. So interesting little factoid there with Jordan. So last year when this was on the list, it was uh, about a $120 card. And uh, this year it's about a $220 card. So again, a significant increase in price there, about 80%, uh, a little bit more than 80% up from last year. So really fun seeing that ascend in uh you know we know that jordan cards have been going up uh, penny cards have been going up a little bit but um not that much <laughs> in most cases so uh interesting to see that i'm not sure if jordan is driving the price up uh it has always buoyed the price of this a little bit as compared to some of the other cards in the set so wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of some of the driving force behind the value of this one still today Next one was a childhood favorite of mine, absolute favorite. 9697 EX2000 Cut Above. So this one last year was not in the top 10. This year it's cracking in at number eight. So if we had been looking at the price of this last year, if it was in the top 10, it would have been about a $140, uh, $145 card. This year, it's almost $230. Now that is because there was a pretty high recent comp. So the recent comp was a little bit over $500. So I, I do tend to think that that's an outlier, but this card doesn't come up for sale terribly frequently. You know, so outside of that $550 comp, uh, you know, these settle in right around the $200 price point. So, you know, if we're looking at the average of being $230, I don't think that's too far off. Uh, like I said, that I wanted to disclose that that is a high comp, so we'll see if that sticks. Uh, be a fun card to see on the card ladder and be able to track the price. Uh, another one that uh, might be a good one to get graded because this is a very, very popular set. Uh, prices are surging on a lot of the players, and Penny is no different. But this is a design I always loved as a kid. Uh, love that full-length picture of Penny in his blue uniform, my favorite. Uh, the Penny 1 shoes down there, love seeing those. And uh, that kind of foil that just plays off of the blues in his jersey is always a lot of fun. So uh, this one's gone up about 60% since last year. Uh, so I'm cracking in at number eight and two hundred and thirty dollars roughly. Next one is a new addition to the list as well. So cracking in at number seven, we've got ninety six ninety seven Flare Showcase Legacy of Penny. This is the first legacy card that I added to my collection. Uh, big thank you to Kyle from Wax Museum. Uh, podcast he actually was able to obtain this and then we were able to work out a trade for this 
and uh, you know he cut me a, a nice deal because he knew this was going into my collection it's not going anywhere ever so uh, really appreciate that it was great to get the first legacy card for penny in my collection uh, and the first year that legacy was uh, created from the flare showcase set so uh, really cool bit of history now this is the row one so there is a base version uh, and then there are two other levels row one and row zero so this is the mid tier of those three and uh, for this row one, right now, these are about a $230, $240 card. Now, last year, if this was in my collection, uh, it would have been about a $130 card looking at comps. The most recent comp was about $260. So, you know, that $230 price point is a, is a fair average, I would say. And, uh, you know, this is up significantly, as you can tell, about $100 since last year, about 80% uh, increase. So really fun cards, different than the 97, 98, because these ones are numbered to 150. Uh, 97, 98, these are numbered to 100 for Legacy, so those do see a significant uptick in value. Uh, also, the row zeros in 96, 97, even though they're also numbered to 150, also get a little bit of a premium uh, when it comes to pricing, so uh, that's something to look out for. So really cool card, love having that in my collection. Again, thank you, Kyle, for that, that deal that we made. <clears throat> Next one here, uh, so we have got, this was on the list last year, it's up a little bit. From last year, we've got the 9798 SPX. This is the Pro Motion insert set of Penny. And these are very hard to find. These are very rare cards. And uh, they do not show up very often at all for sale. So last year, this was uh, ranking in at number seven on the list. This year, it's number six. So last year, uh, the price was about $100. This year, it's about $260. Now, the highest comp that I've found in the last year is $450 and the lowest being uh, about $200. So, you know, 260 I think is a fair, uh, a fair estimation. But again, uh, the most recent comp was uh, about $200, $210, I think. So, uh, you know, the $260 might be a little bit high, you know, but again, these are very rare to, to see and uh, really cool seeing that, you know, that motion capture. Hopefully you can see that with a hologram of Penny and then kind of that picture on the right hand side with that uh, motion capture and kind of the, the tracing of his uh, fly through air. So, you know, again, this one's up significantly from last year and uh you know over a hundred percent increase in price so uh it's gone up uh, a little bit over 150 dollars so about 160 percent increase on this so these uh this set is going up uh very quickly for a lot of the prominent players again very rare set these uh, these do not show up often so if it's if it's a card you like and you want one for your player uh, if you see one uh, don't hesitate to snatch it up because they again they don't come up often i was very lucky to get this in my collection when i did Next one here we have got is 9899 Skybox Thunder Noise Boys. Uh, this was not on the list last year. This year it's uh, at number five. So this was a new edition. I got this through a trade. And uh, you might be asking why I've got a team bag on it. This is another card like the Titanium that's a very thin card. Uh, it's not an acetate, but these can slide around significantly. So uh, it's always safer to keep in a team bag. I'll, I'll try to do the close up, take the team bag off so you can really see. This is like a, a mini lenticular design on that background where you've got kind of that gold to bronze coloration. Really, really cool in hand. I always was enamored with these as a kid. I wanted to get one and uh, had never actually seen one in hand. And after getting one in hand, uh, fell in love with it even more in all honesty. So really cool cards. Uh, can't recommend the set enough if you get a player or if it's just a card that you uh, haven't seen, uh, you know, definitely get one when you can. But, uh, you know, they're pretty rare. So last year, if it was in my collection, I'd uh, be about $120 or $130 card. This year, it's closer to $290. The most recent sale, over $300. So it's $330 for the mo most recent sale of this card. And, uh, you know, there's a high comp of four hundred and ten dollars and the lowest comp that i found was 250 dollars. so you know that that average price that i said of 290 could be going up significantly uh in the not too distant future so uh you know it definitely a significant increase since last year over 100 percent increase in fact so uh you know again like i said this is a set that may be going up significantly in the not too distant future so fun card to have in my collection. I, I don't know if I said this at the beginning, but a card that I actually got in a trade with a couple other penny cards. And I, I moved a very prominent Luca card 
to get these. Uh, you know, the Luca card has ascended more in value, but I'm happier having these cards in my collection than a Luca card uh, that I would really only like in my collection because it's valuable. <laughs> So I always like having PC cards, and uh, and this one's doing me proud in, in raising in price to to make me not feel so uh, so bad about losing out on a on a prominent Luca card. But again, PC always trumps value in my opinion. All right, next one is a very fun one for me. So this is the ninety three ninety four finest rookie refractor of Penny. And this is in a PSA 9. I don't have a lot of graded cards in my collection, uh, but you might remember I have told the story about having this uh, non-refractor PSA 9 in my collection since I was a kid. I got it as a Christmas present from my dad. So when I sought out to get my own refractor version, I wanted a PSA 9 to match, to have those kinds of as twins. So uh, really fun having that. And this refractor of Penny has been going through the roof, especially in a PSA 10, uh, but the PSA 9 has been not, not been doing poorly either. Either. So last year, this was number three on my list. This one is a little bit lower on the list this year at number four. And, uh, you know, that's that's all right because the price is still going up significantly. I am really glad, again, I got this in a trade and uh, I'm really glad I got it when I, when I did because last year it was about a $100 card. This year it's almost a $300 card. Uh, so I'd, I'd estimate the value at about $290. The most recent sale of this in a PSA 9 was actually over $300. So about $320 is what that went for. Uh, there was one sale that was over $400, closer to $450. Uh, the lowest that I've seen it go recently is $165. And, and honestly, it, it's really ticking upwards. If you look at the trajectory of the PSA 10, uh, you, you, this is following a similar trajectory and just going up significantly. So this is really the most prominent rookie card of Penny. So people who are getting into the market and want to get a Penny card are tending to gravitate towards the finest refractor of him. And I don't blame them. A really cool card uh, and the rarest of the Penny rookies. So uh, a fun one to have, you know, so that's up almost 200%. Uh, since last year so you know almost 3x in price really cool uh again happy to have gotten this in my collection it's not going anywhere anytime soon by any means all right this next one is uh was the number one last year so the 1997 spx Hall of View here was Michael Jordan. This was the top card on my list last year. Now this year, it's number three on my list. Uh, so down a little bit, but the price is not down. So this one last year was over a $200 card at about $230. This year, it's at about $350. So, you know, definitely still doing well like Jordan cards are. Hopefully you can pick up that hologram. I absolutely love this set. This is possibly my favorite design set. Uh, for any insert set in the 90s and uh, a set that I, I think I might try to collect at some point in the future having already gotten the penny and a couple other PC players and having the the big dog in Jordan uh, doesn't hurt so it makes it a little bit easier to collect the set if you've already gotten those top ones out of the out of the uh, ranking so this card, uh, like I said, it's been going up significantly. The highest comp that I've seen recently was over $500. Uh, and uh, the most recent comp was just over $300. So $350, I think, is a fair valuation. You know, the lowest comp I've seen was over $250. So I think that's about fair. And, uh, you know, this one hasn't risen as much as some of the other ones. So about a 50% increase in price. Like I said, $230 last year, this year about $350. So not rising as steeply as some of the other cards, but still going up, uh, which is always fun to see. All right, number two on the list is a new entrance uh, for my PC. So this is the 9394 Fleer Ultra Scoring Kings Jordan. Uh, I've talked about this a ton. This is what I think is one of the must-have Jordan cards in any collection, any uh, Jordan collection anyway. Uh, this is just one of those cards that everybody that collected in the 90s wanted and uh, everybody coming back into collecting or that uh, didn't have the means to get it back in the day uh, wants to get at some point in their collection. These cards have been skyrocketing recently. So last year, if this was in my collection, uh, it would have been about a $220, $230 card this year. This card is, I'm, I'm going to put it at an estimated value of about $370. So a very significant uptick in price. The most recent sale, um, and you know, I, I can't really vet the validity of this, but it seems pretty high, uh, was $685. Uh, that's the highest 
comp that I've seen. These are fairly condition sensitive though. So if you get a copy that's in really good shape, uh, it can do better if it's, raw, if it's raw than a card that looks like it might be in a little bit of rougher shape. So uh, because these are pretty condition sensitive, you get the dark, uh, you know, edge, edge to edge color on the front and on the back, it uh, shows imperfections pretty easily. And uh, you know, really a cool foil design but these are cards this is a card that i'm definitely going to get graded at some point in the future you know if i estimate that this would be uh, a nine for psa uh that's about a one uh, or i think it's about a fifteen hundred dollar card right now so safe to say that if i got this graded and it grades out you know an eight or a nine it's it's a thousand dollars or more so uh definitely worth it to get these cards graded in my opinion if you've got one that's in good shape uh, even if it's not in good shape still they sell better even if they're they're a fairly low grade than a raw copy just because people have that assurance of of what the grade is so really cool cards again up significantly since last year almost a 200 percent increase from last year all right the new number one in my collection so <clears throat> this card was on the list last year it was significantly lower this year and it has shot up significantly in price this year so we have the 2003 2004 tops rookie card of LeBron James. Who other than LeBron James or Michael Jordan for the top two, right? So this card last year was number nine on my top 10. This year it is number one, as we see. So last year it was about an $85 card, if you can believe that. It was selling for a little bit less than $100. In some cases it would, it would get up to $100. But this year, as a raw card, this is selling for over $400. Uh, in fact, this is an, at an average of about $430. The most recent sale that I've seen of a raw copy was over $600. The highest recent comp that I've seen was over $800. Obviously, if you're getting that card for $800, you're hoping that that grades out very well. Uh, and these, again, are cards that if you have one that's in good shape with good um, centering, even if it's not perfect centering, but just good centering, it definitely pays to get these graded. So, you know, if you get a PSA 10 or a PSA 9, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for where these cards could go because they just seem to be exceeding the, the prior day records, you know, day over day. So, uh, you know, this card, like I said, $85 last year, over $400 this year. So it's over a $300 increase or over 400% increase for this LeBron James rookie card. Again, another one that I need to get graded. I was hemming and hawing if I wanted to send it to BGS or PSA. And at this point, it seems like PSA is probably the way to go. Uh, for both of these last two, the Jordan Scoring Kings and this LeBron. Uh, so at some point in the future, it will probably show up in a video of mine uh, with a graded slab on it. So we'll see when that happens, but uh, really fun to see this one ascend. And uh, again, another card that I don't see leaving my collection anytime soon, uh, but it's really fun to see that jump up so significantly since last year, going from number nine to number one. You know, not only is it a new number one, you know, both the top two are new to the list, uh, but being one that was on the list and, and jumping up significantly is always really cool to see kind of that underdog mentality. So that is uh, the number one on the list. Not, no shocker that it's a LeBron though, I'm sure. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at those, you know, really the top 15 or, you know, 15 of the, of the top <laughs> most valuable cards in my collection. Uh, really fun putting this together. Like I said, it's been a lot of fun kind of going through my collection and taking a look and seeing uh, how some of those prices have changed. So question of the day is more of a request for you. Uh, please share with me, either put a post out there and tag me in it, shoot me a DM. I would love to hear if you've taken a look at the value of some of your cards. Uh, if you've got a new number one most valuable card, if you've seen a card that's skyrocketed in value, something that has been shocking, like the LeBron rookie for me. Uh, I would love to hear that if you've made a new acquisition, a new addition to your collection that has now been uh, the, the top card for your collection. Share with me some of the changes in your collection over the last year. I would love to hear that. I'd love to see some of those cards that you've added or that have ascended in value uh, or just ones that are your favorites. You know, I've got a lot of fun stories with a lot of cards that I shared today and uh, really all my cards have a story that I could tell. Uh, I love telling stories. I love sharing some of the history and some of the memories that I have with these cards. Uh, so please share some of that with me this week and, you know, don't just keep it limited to this week. Uh, keep sharing those stories with me and everyone in the community. I think that's the fun part of this hobby is the stories and the memories and the nostalgia that goes with it. You know, wearing a Space Jam shirt, that's part of the nostalgia for me. Uh, you know, the, the movies, just everything about the 90s uh, is really kind of harkens me back to a simpler time. Sometimes when, uh, you know, you're trying to do a little stress relief, 
but you know this this hobby is just absolutely incredible uh, I love the hobby so much it's so much fun I think it's the best hobby in the world and I know a lot of us feel the same way so uh, let's all share some of that love this week and uh, in the weeks going forward so uh, that's the question of the day as always thank you for coming and uh, and watching and sharing with uh, some of the passion in this great hobby. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any videos in the future. New videos drop on Wednesdays. Any bonus content will drop on Fridays. Thanks. We'll talk later.